Homeschooling and Assessment 1 by Teija Kauppi and Eija Leskinen, Finnish Active Learning. Welcome to our lecture, Homeschooling and Assessment 1. You will get ideas on how to assess your children's learning. We hope that you will join us later with the lecture, Homeschooling and Assessment 2. There will be more ideas for homeschool. And here is the contents of this lecture. Learning is comprehensive. Why to assess? What to assess? How to assess? Giving feedback and course closure. Learning is always comprehensive. Many things have influence on children's development and on learning. For example, genotype, intelligence, and there are also many other factors like family, environment, culture or friends. Children take a lot of influences from the environment and from friends, but the child's interaction with parents has an important role. Children develop quickly during the first years. There can be monthly improvement. Every year is important considering children's development. Different areas of development such as physical, social and emotional development proceed hand in hand supporting each other. Even though uh, the development is predictable, it's important to remember that there are often individual differences between children's development. Every child is a personality. Why to assess? There are many important reasons for assessing. Comparing earlier observations to new ones, parents can see the direction of children's development. It's easier to plan homeschool when parents know children's skills. They know what to revise and what has been learned. If children have opportunities do, to do self-assessment and participate on their learning, parents and children have more interaction and they can also plan together. Learning is one of the key targets to assess, but it's important also to know other things about children, such as their likes, dislikes and their opinions. That can also help to plan homeschool, because parents can get ideas on how to motivate their children. Assessments helps to choose suitable learning contents. Children develop individually. Some children need, for example, more time for learning. Assessment demonstrates the possible need of support. What to assess? Child's age determines the assessment. Young children can't write or even talk properly yet, so the assessment methods have to take this into account. The methods are different, suitable for young children. Daily observations are important. Next slides introduce some examples of what to observe. Playing skills. There are many things parents can pay attention to when a child is playing. For example, can he play together with the other child? How does he handle the toys? Is he able to share the toys? Or how does a child handle disappointments? Does he rage or is he able to negotiate and just approve the situation? Emotional skills. The capability to handle disappointments is essential for children. Playing involves many opportunities to practice this. 
and parents should support the development. Children just need to have disappointments. In that way, their self-regulation improves. Playing involves all kinds of emotions, so playing situations are excellent for encouraging children to show their emotions freely. Simple questions in different situations improve the ability to recognize the emotions. Parents can ask simple questions like, why are you so angry? Or what makes you so happy today? Small children are anxious to do the same things the siblings and parents do. Their joy is immense every time parents show their joy and praise them when they have learned a new skill, like in the picture, dressing up. Daily routines are usually learned at certain ages, so parents can observe the learning of them. Most skills include a lot of different skills from toddler age to older children. Gross motor skills and fine motor skills enable daily movements and tasks. Children reach certain skills at specific ages, so they can also be assessment targets. Here are some examples of motor skills. Standing and jumping on one foot. Walking on tiptoes. Jumping. He was so proud of himself. 16 jumps. Throwing and catching a ball. Using scissors. Threading, threading P beads and duplicating a block construction. They are also motor skills. Independent initiative. Parents can encourage children towards in the independent initiative. That can also happen through playing. Pretend playing is one way. For example, play kitchen. And one effective way to learn is to take children with parents to work at home, baking, cooking, and so on. That also means that parents should accept imperfect results. Children learn gradually the results are not perfect right away. But later, the children will be capable of taking care of their room or toys, and do other tasks by themselves. Parents' positive feedback strengthens this skill. Speech and, and understanding the speech. Speech and understanding the speech have an immense effect on learning. Children learn by discussing with their parents Parents ask questions, ask children to tell, parents read, and the children hear nursery rhymes. All this helps development. Concentration. Attentiveness and concentration promote learning. The time children can concentrate properly increases gradually. Parents can observe the ability to concentrate. Does the child need many breaks during studying or play? When does he need the breaks? Are they related to certain things or certain school subjects or just certain situations? What could parents do to improve, improve concentrations in positive ways. Balls are versatile equipment. There are many kinds of balls. 
but you can also make balls with the children. Newspaper, versatile material. Here are a bat and a ball. Playing with a tail ball is fun and it's easy to make. You can use a scarf or plastic bag. There is cotton wool or newspaper inside. Use balls as learning, learning equipment too. Here are some examples. You can ask questions. How many balls? What color are the balls? A child can describe the balls. Soft, softer. Or a child can compare sizes. Small, smaller, big, bigger, the biggest. And now it's time for active break with a ball. The girls at school were thinking of some ideas on how to play with the ball with younger children. You can play with your child or children now or later. Watch the video. Now we share some ideas on how to assess children's skills and learning. Observations. Observations are the pace of assessment. The child develops quickly during the first years. There are different things to observe at every age. Let's see video. There are many more ideas for observations in the chapter What to Assess. Discussion and Listening Parents talk to their children since they are born. Speech and understanding the speech are extremely important skills and they have a strong effect on learning. Active discussion and asking questions help parents to assess. You can ask the name of things, ask questions, ask to tell, or ask to explain and find out what does he like or doesn't like. You can also ask child's opinions of his own learning or behavior. Participating. When Parents participate actively in daily children's tasks and exercises. They get a lot of important observations. At the same time, parents can ask questions and ask to tell and explain, but also encourage and support. Notes Even though parents remember their children's development, written notes can be valuable, especially if there are some problems. Parents can write them down, but write also down the methods that were helpful. 
There can be also more official forms for assessment. Parents can ask for them from teachers or child health centers. Here are some examples what you can write down. Can he recognize the colors? Can he jump with on food? At what age does he read? And so on. Save. Saving children's artwork, notebooks, videos of them, possible tests and so on, help parents to compare earlier results to new ones and assess the progress. Even though the development has certain passes at certain ages, it's important to remember that children are individuals. They learn in their own schedule. Child's self-assessment. Parents should pay attention to child's age and choose the assessment methods according to that. Children can assess many things, for example, their own behavior, playing skills, ability to take others into account, learning, artworks, music skills, and so on. Ability to remember the rules. It's important to let children assess also other things than just their learning. If learning is sometimes difficult, they can get the essential experiences of succeeding some other way. When parents ask child's opinion, they develop child's self-esteem and take child's opinion into account. Self-assessment is one way to teach the children how they learn, what they have learned, to respect themselves, to trust themselves, and to give them a positive image of themselves as learners. Children can say, I can. Giving feedback. Feedback from parents has a strong effect on child's motivation and learning. Feedback from parents is essential. It's important to give feedback about child's actions, exercises, learning, and so on, not about the personality. The most rewarding feedback for children is supportive and constructive. There should always be some positive aspects. Children should not be discouraged. It's important for parents to also show the joy of facial expressions, gestures, and tone of voice. Considering child's behavior, it's better to give a lot of attention to good behavior, not so much to negative behavior. Parents can say, Great! You have learned a lot! You'll do it better next time. Well done. I'm proud of you. Let's discuss what you could do differently. Very good. A strong self-esteem has many positive effects on children's comprehensive development, on learning and on personality for the whole life. Positive feedback strengthens self-esteem. Here are some effects of positive feedback. Child has a positive image of himself. Child has a positive image of his skills. Child has a positive image of his futures. Child approves himself. Child trusts himself. Child respects himself. And child feels appreciated. When child enjoys learning, child learns better. Pause closer. We like to highlight positive feedback which supports, encourages and motivates. Think of your child or children. In what situations during the school day could you use these easy positive feedback methods? You can thank, 
brace, or give something like a sticker, an extra break, applause, and so on. Smile. You can also hug. Hopefully you have got new ideas and inspiration which help you to plan assessment at home school. We also hope that we inspired you to join later the lecture homeschooling and assessment too. There we share more ideas for assessment. See you later. Finnish Active Learning. Best wishes, Teja and Eja.